Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Midwife Life. So today, I am going to tell you all about my first placement back after having six, seven months off, something like that, due to COVID. Um, so, 23rd of March 2020, I had a day shift on the midwife-led unit. And then that evening I got back and Boris obviously made his announcement and we got pulled out from placement. So, I ended up having six months off. We love that. Um, so yeah, I just had my first four week block of placement after all of that and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it and what I did, how I felt, nerves, everything, all about it. Um, I've got my drink with me so it's just going to be... It's just going to be really chill, chatty video. So yeah, like I said, I had four weeks and I was supposed to have two weeks in community and two weeks antenatal, um, but I got pulled from antenatal, I think just because they couldn't facilitate everybody and COVID and everything. Um, so I ended up having four weeks in community, working with all the community midwives, which I loved. I loved it. Um, I've been in community before, quite a lot of my first year placements were in community I think actually all of them um, apart from the couple of weeks that I had on the midwife led unit um, I was in community so I knew everybody there and it was there was something about it that was quite familiar to me about going back there and quite a nice place to ease me back into placement again I guess <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there was something about having those months off that made me quite nervous going back into placement and it kind of felt like I was starting everything again, starting everything new and I just didn't really know what was going on, what I had to do. But at the same time, because I'd been there and knew everybody, it was quite familiar at the same time. So that doesn't really make much sense. But <laughs> now I have to say it was exhausting, exhausting. I was so, so tired by the end of it. The last week... I think it kind of caught up with me. We live in a place in mid Wales. Um, it's near to Newtown, if you're familiar with Wales, don't know. Um, so it's about an hour, hour 10 on a good day to Shrewsbury. Um, it used to take me about an hour 20 to get there. And I thought, do you know what, four weeks, I'll be able to do that. It's Monday to Friday, leave at seven, get home at six. And I thought, do you know what, that'd be fine. I'll be okay with that. I can do that. <sighs> I mean, I did it, but I hadn't quite realised how tiring it was going to be. Um, towards the end, I think the last week, I stayed at my friend's house a couple of nights because I just couldn't face the drive home. I just couldn't do it. We made it. We're here. I just didn't see the point in starting a four-week contract or a contract at where I'm gonna mo I'm moving back to where I was in the first year in November but I didn't see the point in starting it from September because I knew that after the four week placement everything was going back to online and I wouldn't need to be in Shrewsbury for uni if that makes sense. If you're not familiar with what community midwives do um, they look after women antenatally then they're also on call a couple of nights and might get called to like home birth and then they also look after women postnatally, so for the first generally 10 days. So yeah, they look after antenatally, a little bit of intrapartum and postnatally. So that's what I've been doing for the past four weeks. I love community. I absolutely love it. I don't think I'd be able to do it as a newly qualified midwife. Um, there's been a lot of drama about that. We're not going to get into that today. Um, because it is a lot of responsibility, you are working... Or Auto I can never say this word autonomously um, and when you're out in the community with women and in the surgeries you're on your own um, but I love it as a student because I get to see women I get to it, there's quite a lot of continuity there and I've got the midwife there to help me so I don't feel on my own which is probably why I love it but I, f I can imagine that if you are on your own it can be quite daunting unless you've got that experience I actually managed to do some appointments by myself. 
obviously with the midwife supervising me and there to help me and step in if I'm not sure about anything but I was doing appointments by myself and I was so excited um, so before I was doing obviously maternal obs, urine analysis, um, listening to fetal heart, checking the baby over afterwards, everything like that but I wasn't doing the actual talking part and to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified about it. But I obviously knew that at some point I was gonna have to do it, it's my job. <laughs> um, and after you've done it a few times, it just comes up part and parcel and yeah, I really do, I love it. I love it. Vena puncture I also did, we'd done the theory and I was taking people's bloods and I have to say, touch wood, don't wanna jinx it or anything, I'm actually pretty good at it. It obviously I miss sometimes. People, the midwife that I was working with has been qualified 20 years and still misses sometimes. So it is it is normal, I guess, <laughs> to miss the vein sometimes. But I have to say I wasn't, wasn't bad. But I attended a home birth, which was a really really good experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you ever get the opportunity as a student to go to a home birth, do it. I really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it got to the end, it got to like 9pm and she'd not given birth yet and I thought I have to go home and we ended up having to transfer her in to hospital anyway. I think she ended up with a Von Tuss delivery, so yeah. Um, I, but I did attend it and I was there with her for the majority of the day, which was really, really nice and the atmosphere in a home birth is just so lovely. Like I said, a bit glad that I didn't get to see her, but glad that mum and baby are all good. I was on call for one night as well. So yeah, I was on call for one night, um, which was a experience in itself. The midwife that I was working with, my practice supervisor that I was working with for the majority of the four weeks, to be honest, absolutely love her, um, said, oh look, I'm on call tonight with this other midwife um, who works in the community. And I thought, do you know what? I wanna be on call as well. She said, do you wanna be on call with us? And I said, do you know what, I do. Um, if I want to be on call with anybody and get called out with anybody it would be them too so I thought we'll do it so I didn't sleep very well that night I kept waking up thinking have I missed a phone call have I oh my god have they rung me but no they didn't <laughs> um, I didn't get called out but like I said it was a good experience it was nice to kind of see how it kind of worked you know yeah I did a couple of VEs which was quite cool I'm not gonna lie I didn't really feel a lot. The cervix, this is gonna get a bit gruesome, so if, you, if you're a bit squeamish or whatever, then just skip ahead a little bit, but if you're watching this as a student midwife or a midwife, then you should just be used to it. <laughs> um, I couldn't feel the cervix. The cervix, the midwife said, was quite posterior, so she had to like pull it forward. I'm doing the hand gestures and that's just not fun. Um, See, so I didn't really feel a lot, but it was, good to kind of just 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 have a go you know what I mean like that's the thing as a student is you need to take every opportunity and just push yourself I'm trying to think what else I did I did my first NST so if you don't know on day five um, postnatally the baby needs a heel prick test they get a prick in their heel you have to drop the blood onto like some blotting paper type thing and then they get sent off and get tested for metabolic disorders I'm going to test my knowledge here and see if I can remember what they're for so it's MCAD which is how they process like fats and sugars um, I think it's cystic fibrosis as well they test for hypothyroidism so an underactive thyroid and lots of other ones see so yeah, I did my first one of those and it wasn't the best but the midwife said they'll take it, like they can get samples out of that, so that's fine. Um, oh, I got a couple of follow through care ladies, so as part of my course at the uni I'm at, you have to get six follow through care ladies over the three years. She's due on Christmas day, so I probably won't get to go to her birth, but um, you don't have to go to the birth. So, like if you can't make it to the birth, then it's not like a necessity, it's just making sure that you can get to as many appointments as possible, so. Yes, I've seen her a few times. To summarise, it was a really, really good four weeks. Um, at the end of it, I was kind of sad to leave. I just love it there. They're just like a second family, like a second home, and they really look after you. Uh, oh, just, I really appreciate 
that what they've done for me and how they've helped me so I did get them chocolates a card and some flowers yeah it was just really nice and sad to leave but I know that I'll be back they can't get rid of me um I've already been back once um and I've been gone what have I been gone I've gone a week now so yeah I've already been back once in that week so like I say they cannot get rid of me <laughs> can't quite remember where I got to but I think I was just saying that that was my four weeks. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. And I'll hopefully, when I actually get back to full on uni and moving back to uni and everything, I'll have a few more videos out each week. <laughs> well, like one each week, because I've been missing a few, I'm not gonna lie. My bad. Just been a bit, a bit crazy, especially being on placement. It's just been a bit. So. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. And I see a bit...